Today we're going to take a quick look at how you can create a Christmas arrangement for the home. So welcome back. If you haven't been here before, my name is Sharon and I started this YouTube channel a couple of years ago when I wanted to help beginner flower arrangers and florists learn to create some very basic floral designs. And the channel has grown and it's expanded and we've learned lots of different ideas. But today I'm going to go back to basics, but this time using a Christmas theme for those original designs that we looked at way back when I first started the channel. And if you haven't seen those, I'll link it in the cards just here and you can pop back. If you're a beginner, it's going to really help you understand floral design. But for this next series of videos, I'll call it Back to Basics Christmas Style. We're going to look at probably about seven different arrangements that you could create at home for the festive period. Now don't worry if you haven't been flower arranging before, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on everything you need to know to create a beautiful design. And we're gonna start with looking at a very basic container. So this is almost like a flower pot that you could pick up anywhere in one of your local shops. You might have something similar to this at home. This is an aluminium tin that is designed for floral design and I buy it from my suppliers. But any flower pot that's probably about five inches in height is suitable for this particular design. I don't want you to go too wide with the container. Narrow, if I just hold my hand on the top there, we're almost a hand span in size. This is going to be a vertical or a line arrangement, so it's going to be tall and quite slim line. There's not a huge amount of flowers in this particular design, which is why it's good for beginners, but it's a, a more advanced version of the designs I've done in the past. So inside my container is some floral foam, and this is the green floral foam. It's been pre-soaked in water. Again, if you're not sure how to soak the foam and how to prepare the foam, pop back and look at one of my previous tutorials. I cut this so it's just a little bit proud of the container. You can go taller and you can sit it below the level of the container. It depends on the quantity of flowers you've got and the amount of foliage that you have to work with. The more foam you have visible above your container, the fatter and the more dense this area of the design is going to be. I want this to be quite minimal without using a huge amount of greenery in this section here. The design tends to become bottom heavy if you have a lot of floral foam to cover. So this is why I have a minimum quantity of foam. But it does need to be quite deep because my selection of flowers is quite tall. The arrangement itself is going to be quite tall and I need to have the depth in the foam to insert my stems into. Now I have a selection of florist bought foliage mainly, but you could probably pick up lots of these flowers either from your own garden or from a florist shop or from your local supermarket. And any good florist will order in a selection of foliage and flowers for you. You just need to give them a little bit of time if they're not carrying it in their standard stock. I'm using a florist grade rose. So this is a gorgeous tall stemmed red rose and I'll link any varieties or names of foliage in the description box below. So you can refer back to that at any time. But you'll see with the florist rose, it's nice thick stemmed, it's particularly tall. The head is nice and sumptuous. Supermarket roses tend to be a much smaller variety. The grade isn't quite as good as a florist rose and this is going to open up beautifully for you at home. If you can't get hold of a florist rose, it could be a carnation, single gerbera, but ideally a single flower. So a carnation will work just as well. And it's a carnation I would have used back in the first tutorial. But today we're moving up a gear and we're looking at a different type of flower. Okay. Height wise, the height of my flower arrangement is going to be at least twice the height of my container. I just got a piece of string here to give you an example of how you would work that out. So that is the height of my container. If we do that twice, that length is 
the minimum height you want to go with this type of arrangement. That to me looks quite short. What you have to remember with this base is it's quite shiny, it's very dominant, it's visually quite heavy, it's quite eye-catching to you. So if we created a taller arrangement, it would draw your eye away from that very shiny container there at the bottom. So I'm going to go a little bit taller, maybe taller again, but twice the height is your minimum and that's just a gauge. I would avoid going any shorter because you'll end up with a dumpy squat looking arrangement. This one needs to be fairly tall and slender and we're not going particularly wide with this one. So line or linear arrangement or a vertical arrangement, often called a vertical line and we're gonna have a look how that comes together. I'll start with my flowers first but there's no reason why you can't put a foliage outline in to begin with. I've always been encouraged to use flowers first. Now that is a little bit too tall, so what we're going to look at doing, if we again look at that string, that will give me a rough guide of where I need to cut my stem. I've cut it at a slight angle, it'll make it easier to go into the foam, and I'm going to go roughly two thirds of the way back in my floral foam, and I'm going to take that stem in quite deep into the foam so that it doesn't wobble around. And if we look at it from the side, you'll see it's really straight. Straight up and down, almost at that 90 degree angle there. There is foliage to come at the back and I've got some berries as well. So I don't want to come too close to the back of my foam with my first stem. This is the front position. And what I have to remember with this container is that it has two side seams on either side. So I need to remember to work on the front so that we don't have that ugly seam visible when you're looking at the arrangement. Now I'm gonna work my way down towards this area here because that's what we refer to as the focal point. And I'm going to step them down, keeping the stems quite straight and quite rigid. I'm probably going to have, oh, a little bit tall, about an inch gap in between each flower. So when you're learning, I would suggest cutting the flower cautiously and slowly and carefully. If you cut it too small, then you might waste it and not be able to reuse it. A good little tip is to turn the flower upside down on the foam. We're looking for it to go roughly in this position here, so the gap is fairly similar. So this will help gauge roughly where you need to cut it. And if it's too long, we can always cut it shorter. Obviously, if it's too short, there isn't a great deal I can do about it. But I'm now aiming to bring a sort of staggered line down through the front. And in floristry, we call this a focal line. I'm looking to have the gap between each flower head, fairly similar. It doesn't have to be perfect. Flowers are natural. We don't want to make them look too uniform and too artificial. But the line is very gently staggered back and forth. What I'm looking for in my roses is to start with the smaller head at the top, working my way down to a bigger rose each time so that the more open rose and the more dominant rose is at what we call the focal point, which is at the bottom. Okay, so we've got four so far. Now, in floral design, we often learn to work with odd numbers. So I've got five roses, but if you're learning and you can only get four roses or you can only get eight carnations or whatever it happens to be, then just work with what you've got. Those odd numbers tend to be a lot more pleasing to the eye. So straight away, we have that vertical line. We have movement and rhythm because the color bounces back and forth. And if we look at it from the side, you'll see that I have a profile starting to take place. The design isn't flat. We get that three dimensional effect running from the front to the back. And with a vertical arrangement like this, this is sort of the very start of floral design if you're learning formal shapes. What we will do with this is keep the design quite narrow. I'm not going to make it a triangle and come wide. My foliage 
and any flowers that I'm going to use. I've got some Christmas accessories as well. They stay towards the center there. Okay, let's just strengthen the back of the arrangement. You might not be able to get hold of this foliage yourself because I would describe this as a florist bought foliage. This is called Osphalmus. The variety is Sussex Silver. You could have something like this growing in your garden. It's very similar to rosemary, but it could be anything that's not too thick and bushy. We want something that creates a line, that makes your eye travel up and down. And um, you might have holly in your garden, you might have a thin type of conifer. But this now is going to come towards the back, behind my rose, just to sort of strengthen the height. I'm also going to add in the back section some bulrushes. And what I've done with the bulrush is I've given them a quick little spray over with some super silver. This is an Oasis spray and um, I'll show you an example of it a bit later on. These are going to come behind my roses and alongside that grey foliage. It's going to help create a little bit more height in the arrangement and draw your eye away from the rose so that my floral design isn't finishing on a dead end. That rose isn't the final flower. That could be achieved with a taller piece of foliage but I didn't have one with me today. So instead I'm using that lovely silver colour. It connects well with my container and makes your eye travel all the way up to the top of the arrangement. And we call that rhythm and repetition. Now I need to consider covering the base and maybe bringing a little bit of red colour in up towards the top of the arrangement. And I've got the ideal flower to do that. Not a flower, but a berry. Now this is the Ilex berry, so it's the leafless hollyberry. It's a commercially grown um, hollyberry. You can buy it as a shrub. Um, I wasn't very successful with it in my garden. What I'm looking for with the hollyberry is to create some line movement in the design as well. So this is to help draw that red colour in all the way to the top. It's not a particularly bushy material. It's still quite slim line and I think I'm going to add it on the side with the silver bulrushes and that's going to give me lots of textural interest and help continue the red from the top to the bottom as well. Now we need to consider this base section here and I've chosen a hydrangea. You might not be aware that you can dry the hydrangeas really well. They just need to be kept in a room with a good air circulation. Don't put them in the garage or the shed, it tends to be a bit too damp. But this is a hydrangea that I cut about a month ago. I've left it in a shallow amount of water and it's dried beautifully. And then I've given it a light sort of dusting with the burgundy spray. So this is the Oasis spray paint. And it was the silver version that I used on the bulrushes there at the back. And this is going to give me some visual weight at the bottom of the arrangement. The whole bunch as it is, or the whole stem as it is, is going to be a little bit overpowering. So I'm going to trim that off until I've got a size that I'm quite happy with. And I've probably reduced that by about half. And that's going to cut up underneath my roses. And that's going to give me some base weight. It's going to bring that colour all the way through to the bottom and it covers that floral foam really quickly with just one simple piece. So if you're in the UK or you're in the part of the world where it's currently the autumn, try and get those hydrangeas in before they get too damp and too wet. When you can feel that almost sort of crispy texture, you know they're ready to be dried. And then I'm gonna repeat that on the opposite side so that we're covering quite a big part of our floral foam. Now I'm going to introduce some greenery at the bottom. I've already explained that I don't want to go too wide. So I've got lots of off cuts of a pine that's called silver pine. This is one of the Pissier again, I'll link it in the description box. And when I'm doing bigger arrangements, we often get these small little offshoots and they're ideal for these small arrangements. They're great for table arrangements. 
and as florists we've obviously paid for this so we don't want to throw it away because it's just like throwing money in the bin and on the opposite side to where I put the hydrangea I'm going to cluster a little section there together. Now I don't feel that I need to bring any foliage in this section here because my foam is completely covered but what I'm going to do is to I'm going to bring that same texture and colour of the silver pine onto the opposite side of the arrangement. This time I need slightly longer pieces and that's going to help link one side of the arrangement to the other but without making the design too fat and too dense there at the base. So slightly longer pieces this time over on the opposite side. So how's that coming together? What do we think so far? Now I think that's perfectly achievable for a beginner. You just need to focus on some simple foliages for the base. If you don't have the pines like I do, it can be an ivy leaf, camellia, you might have conifer. Just have a look around your garden or your neighbor's garden or pop into your local florist shop and ask for some expert advice from the ones who know what they're talking about. If I wanted to, I could add in another piece of the Ilex Berry there at the back, but I don't really want to make this design into a triangle, so I'm going to keep it quite slim line. If we think about the container, I've not gone a great deal wider than the container itself, but what I am going to do is to bring in a silvery texture, which is going to help link with my container as well. The silver tones that I've got in the top section are very matte and quite dull. So I'm going to bring in something that's sort of in the middle and that is going to be in the form of these very small, pretty little baubles. So it's going to help give me a silver link with the bottom and it's going to introduce a different color and different texture into the top part of the arrangement. I'm going to sit them almost in between the sort of roses and the hydrangea head. The hydrangea head is quite a solid flower. It's quite visually heavy. So a couple of those delicate little silver baubles in there is really going to help prevent that hydrangea head becoming too visually overpowering at the focal point. And there are a couple of ways you can attach your baubles. If you have a hot glue, you can take the top off and hot glue them onto some kebab sticks. But what I've done is I've used a florist wire and I've taken it through the loop and bent the wire, twisted it over a couple of times. Hopefully we'll bring the camera in close so you can see that one. And that wire can then insert into the floral foam. Once you've glued them onto the kebab sticks, then they are quite firmly secured on there. Doing it this way means I can take the wire off and use them in different floral designs. This would be ideal in a reception desk. If you've got a hall table, this would look marvellous sitting on the hall table. And if you do church flowers, then this would be fantastic on the back of the altar. You could do a row of them or a matching pair on either side. And it would also look great in the entrance table to your church as well. And I mention churches because I know there's a lot of subscribers to the channel who do weekly church flower arrangements. So the first of the Christmas designs, hopefully there's going to be one or two videos in the lead up to Christmas showing you how you can create different designs for the home. I hope you've enjoyed that one. As ever, thanks for coming back. We're over 6,000 subscribers, which I'm absolutely delighted about. Click the notification bell if you want to be told every time I upload a new tutorial. Thanks for watching. See you again very soon. Bye for now.